we'll get a lot of customers who say, oh, I wish I could come visit you at one of your open houses, but uh, I live in Africa or I'm not off that day. So we're gonna do a quick tour of the Lost Art Press storefront here. And today we're gonna cover the bench room, my favorite room. And this is our uh, entrance that we rebuilt uh, when we, after we bought this in 2015. Added the logo, it's intentionally off-centered. And so let's take a look at the bench room. When we bought this building, it was called The Blaze, uh, which was a uh, kind of notorious bar in downtown Covington here. And we have stripped all the walls, all the purple, all the glitter away and have rebuilt it uh, in the way that we think it probably was when the building was first built in 1896. The bar, which is original here, the back bar actually, uh, came with the building and has been here since the building was constructed. This was first a German bar and grocery in this extremely German corner of Covington. Uh, German was the primary language spoken here for many years up until World War I. Um, our building faces east, so we get a lot of really harsh light in the morning, which is offset by the prism glass, of course, but usually by 10 or 11 o'clock, uh, things are, are pretty nice here. So let's start over here in this corner. We call this corner the Brendan Gaffney Memorial Cleaning Station. Uh, Brendan used to be uh, with us and uh, he left his little plane rack, which is where we uh, keep our brooms. Um, my Roman workbench, which I use for chair making all the time. Uh, the little orange ties are to prevent people from uh, knocking their knees, which happens uh, a lot. So here also in the window today, uh, we have the Holtzoffel workbench, one of the many workbenches I've built over the years, and one of uh, Megan's Dutch tool chests. This one is headed to Iowa someday. It is, of course, the color blue. Also blue, almost everything that is blue, belongs to Megan Fitzpatrick. And here uh, she is with one of her tool chests that is destined for a customer on the East Coast and some oak scraps for the interior bits. Here we have Megan's workbench, which is made from glue lamb. Uh, she's probably going to build a new one in the coming year. Um, this one has been ragged out uh, quite a bit, modified, and uh, could probably, probably needs a new one. Um, there is our Olmia workbench. That one's gonna leave us someday, uh, and I'm gonna replace it with just a, you know, a Rubo or like the one I built for the Anarchist workbench. Uh, this bench is my least favorite, even though it is a really nice, expensive, early Olmia. Uh, bourbon barrel that we use for uh, garbage. This area here uh, is what we call the Megan Fitzpatrick Memorial Mailing Station. Um, we do a lot of mailing. Um, we don't mail out our books from here. Those are mailed out from Indianapolis, but still we are processing, inspecting, uh, and really putting tools together. And then we have to mail them out uh, different places. And so we do have to have a dedicated mailing station. This is my favorite new toy. This is a paper tape machine, which uh, reduces our plastic output, but ooh, paper tape. I just wasted some paper, sorry trees. Um, but we have a scale here that can go up to, I think 500 pounds and all the stuff we need for uh, mail and stuff. Over there on the left is the entrance to the living quarters. My wife and I and one of my daughters still uh, live here. And so I have a really short commute and I can always go down and do some work at night in my bare feet if I need to. Uh, this is my French oak uh, Roubaix workbench, which I love using, but we have moved it out over here for students uh, for now. Uh, Monticello workbenches. We have our um, little hardware nail cabinet, which is based on the one in Roy Underhill's shop, which I think was started life as a crate. One of the tool chests that we use for student tools, which is from uh, the Anarchist Design book. One of the chairs that I have in process. Oh, and we have a visitor. Hi, Bean. Uh, Bean is always up for a tour. So, Bean, what can you tell us? Well, Bean just wants some pets. Here is my tool chest. 
a couple of flags made for us by uh, Texas Heritage Woodworks. We just love these flags. Uh, this is the chest from the Anarchist Tool Chest. It is still the chest I work out of every day. And as you can see, it is quite soiled from, well, more than a decade of use now. And I keep all my tools in here. Uh, the second tray is chair making tools. Top tray is layout and uh, tools that I use every minute of the day. And then the lesser needed tools down there at the bottom. But I'd really be lost without my tool chest. Uh, moving over here, we have the two most important machines in the shop. Uh, an old 14 inch bandsaw from about 1980 uh, that I fixed back up. The only bandsaw we have, I use this for about 90% of my work. Um, it's not really souped up in any way. We have a Craig jig fence, uh, hashtag never sponsored. And, uh, and then we're not also sponsored by Rigid, but we need to keep this place clean because I have, uh, I have a problem. So Bean, what can you tell us about my workbench, Bean? Here is my workbench from the book, The Anarchist Workbench, and uh, The Anarchist Bean Bench, we also call it. Working on a chair that is inspired by Lord of the Rings. Uh, Benchcrafted hardware and uh, blacksmith planing stop from Tom Latinay. Uh, love this bench, no tail vise. Um, uh, kind of old uh, swiveling stool there from uh, salvage from a university. Um, our tool walls back here, um, they were uh, built to conceal the bookcases back behind there. Uh, when we open up as a bookstore, we take those covers off, which is a royal pain in the butt. And then we set up as a bookstore and then the uh, uh, tool covers whatever you want to call them, go back in the machine room for the day. Um, I wish we had a better solution. We should have made them doors or, or something, but maybe some other year. And that's really about it for the bench room. We'll end it here on uh, my Nicholson workbench, which is from my 2007 uh, book. And I was hoping that maybe Bean would say something to us or look for some mice in the dog holes or ignore us. Oh, good, he's ignoring us, so. Um, next time we will take a look through that door on the right, which is where we do most of our research and our publishing activities.